Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So in today's session, we will continue our discussion on demand forecasting. So if you remember in the previous class, we talked about that what is the need for demand forecasting, what are the different uh, techniques of demand forecasting, what are the different steps involved in that. Then you talked about the methods of other uh, techniques of the demand forecasting, typically more on the subjective part of it. And uh, generally that is known as the subjective or the qualitative uh, methods of uh, demand forecasting and in today's class we discuss about the quantitative method of demand forecasting. So uh, to start with that why we need this quantitative methods for demand forecasting, if you look at uh, subjective, subjective methods can be used only when past data is not available. And when past data is available, it is advisable that the firm should use statistical tool as it is more scientific and cost effective. So if you remember in case of uh, when we are discussing about the subjective method, we also discussed that uh, if subjective method is generally used, if it is a case of a new product getting into a new market or doing some improvement in the market or getting into a specific segment of the market. So, in this case subjective method is generally more valid because uh, here there is no past data is available. But when the past data is available, it is always advisable to get more scientific, more accurate demand uh, forecasting and also more cost effective demand forecasting, it is better to use the statistical tools so that on the basis of the past data you can use the statistical tools and you can get a more uh, effective or the accurate demand forecasting. And generally uh, this case typically in the quantitative method it is more depend upon that whatever the past data available about the quality and quantity of the past data and that gives more clarity about the accuracy of the demand forecasting. So when it comes to the quantitative method of demand forecasting essentially it depends upon the time series of the past sales. So to uh, discuss about this quantitative method of uh, forecasting, we will take first the trend methods and in, tra in trend methods the trend projection and here basically we use the time series data. And what is time series data? Time series data when we keep the, when we record the information on a chronological basis, maybe it is on a weekly basis, only monthly basis, only day basis, quarterly basis, hour basis or the yearly basis. When we order this, when we arrange this data on a chronological order on the basis, the basis may be weekly, monthly, yearly or uh, maybe in a uh, hour basis or the day basis, generally that is known as the uh, time series data. And this trend projection, uh, this method typically looking at the past data, whatever the trends is being there in the past data, uh, using this quantity method typically this trend projection, the projection will be done on the basis of the past trend of that typical data. So here the um, basis for it, this trend projection is the time series data because time series data gives the trend because it is on a chronological order and we get the full set of data and it gives a trend that whatever the behavior of that typical variable in the past time period. And after getting the past sales data, the projection will be done in case of the future time period or the projection will be done what will be the demand for that product in the future time period. So in case of uh, time series data, mainly there are four components. First one is secular trend. And in case of secular trend, generally the change occurs consistently over a, over a long time, it is relatively smooth in its path. So we know that in case of secular trend means it is equal, if you look at it say the trend, whatever the change in the trend, suppose it, it may happen that in the time series data, if you have 5 years data, the trend is that maybe every year in a particular month it increases or every year in a particular month it decreases or maybe 
in the beginning quarter it increases, in the end quarter it decreases. So, the demand whatever the change in the demand that remains same in case of the secular trend and this change occurs consistently over a long time. It is not that it is just changes for one year, the next year it is not changing or the third year it is not changing. Rather, whatever is the change, it goes on for a long period of time and that is why this is known as the secular trend and in case of secular trend, the change occurs consistently over a long period of time and relatively smooth in its path. And why it is smooth? Because it is consistent and it occurs for a long period of time. Then the second component is a seasonal trend. And generally, the seasonal trend is the seasonal variation in the data within a year. So, suppose this is if you look at we take a product that okay, this is the demand for ice cream. So, what would be the seasonal variation here? So, obviously, in the summer season it is going to be high, in the winter and rainy season it is comparatively low, and this variation will be there throughout the time series data within a year in each summer the variation is there because there is a increase and the other part it is decrease. So, seasonal trend is generally similarly if you take the case of the winter garment. Obviously, the demand has to be more in case of the winter season and less in case of the summer season. So, in this case we need we need to see the product is what kind of product whether it is a seasonal product. And if it is a seasonal product, generally the variation is on also in the data within a year in that specific season where the data been generally being used or the product generally being used. Then uh, the, the third component is uh, cyclical trend and here there is a cyclical movement in the demand for a product that may have the tendency to recur, uh, recur in a few years. So, if you remember about the uh, business cycle. Uh, we discuss about a business cycle. Generally, the economic activity follows a different, uh, different uh, path. Sometimes it goes to the boom, sometimes it goes to the recession. Similarly, when in case of cyclical trend, the trend also uh, follows a cycle and it increases, then after sometimes it decreases and the same increases get followed also in the next time period. So, whether it is a boom, whether it is a recession, it, it follows the same kind of variation in next uh, time period or maybe after a few time period. That is why this trend is cyclical because this is a cyclical moment. So, if it is increasing now, it is not that the next period it has to decrease, next period it has to increase or the next period again it has to increase. It follows the cycle if it is increasing now, maybe after few years or after few months, whatever may be the basis for the data on that basis it may increase again and that is why this cyclical trend is. Uh, a possibility here is or the tendency is that the same kind of change or the same kind of variation has to recur in a few year. So, cyclical movement in the, uh, in the demand for a product that may have the tendency to recur in the few days or few years or few months whatever may be the basis for the time series. Then the last uh, project, last uh, component of the time series is the random event. And what is random events? Random events is generally when the variation comes from the random events and what are the typical uh, uh, variations. So, you take the case of your natural calamities, your social unrest. In this case, there is no trend of evidence and it create a random variation in this trend. Because the social unrest is happening, it is not happening very frequently that there will be evidence in each year 10 times. So, okay, this is the demand when there is a social unrest. It is not a regular feature and if it is not a regular feature, the evidence it is difficult to find in the time series data. Maybe it is a social unrest before 20 years and social unrest now. So, since this time series suppose in this case we are taking a time series of data of last 5 years, if there is no evidence of the social unrest in last 5 years, whatever the variation in this case particularly for the social unrest that has to be random and because this is a random event. Similarly, for the natural calamities like if the flood has happened this year and if the flood has not happened in last 5 years, whatever will the, whatever will the effect on the demand that will be of course, the uh, effect of because of the effect is on the trend due to natural calamities and it is always the random because it has not happened in the previous time period. 
So, when the variation occurs due to random event, the variation has to be random because there is no evidence of such kind of variation in the trends. So, there are four components of price, uh, price uh, time series data. One is the uh, cyclical trend, second is the random event, third is, third is the seasonal trend and fourth is the secular trend. Now, what are the uh, component of this uh, time series? So, this whatever the component we discuss here, if you can put it in the uh, formulate in the equation form, then y that is put in the time series that has to be equal to the T plus S plus C plus R. Here C S is the secular trend, C is the cyclical trend, R is the random event and T is the seasonal trend. And if you, so if this can be in the edit, 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 uh, addition form or it can be also in the multiplication form. So, the first one is that is T plus S plus C plus R is the additional form and it uh, y is equal to T S C R can be the multiplicative form. And if you are taking the logarithmic, uh, logarithmic uh, transformation of this multiplicative form, then we will get log y is equal to log t plus log s plus log c plus log r. So, here the entire trend has four uh, kind of uh, components and this can be done, uh, this can be formulated either in the additive form or in the case of the multiplicative form and uh, multiplicative form again we can transform in, uh, into the logarithmic form. Now, what are the methods for this trend projection? So, till the time we are talking about the components of the time series data, because for the trend projection the basis is time series data. Now, we will see what are the methods for the trend projection and what are the methods for the trend, uh, trend projection? The first one is the graphical method. As the name suggests, generally in this case the projection will be done in the uh, using a graph. The past values of the variable in the different time is plotted in a graph and movement of the series is assessed and the future values are forecasted. So, in this case we will identify okay, here we need to uh, forecast the demand. So, in that case we will see what are the two variables to forecast the demand. Maybe on the basis of the advertisement what will be the what will be the sales or on the different or maybe in the previous time period or in a specific time period what was the demand for the product. So, time and quantity will plot it in a graph, we will follow that, we will see the series, we will plot a line, we will see the series and after looking at the series, we can forecast, okay, if this was the trend in the last 5 years, what is going to be trend or what will be the forecasted demand for this product in the next 5 years. So, looking at the past trend, using the graphic method generally, we can forecast the future trend. So, we will just take a graphical explanation to this uh, graphic methods and how generally this trend is uh, the projection of the trend is done in case of the graphical method. So, here we can take time, here we can take quantity, suppose this is 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009 and 2010. So, here it is 0, uh, sorry this is maybe 10, this is 0, this is 20, this is 30, this is 40, this is 50 and so on. So, suppose we have the data about last 5 years 2010 till or last 6 years that is from 2005 to 2010. So, suppose we in 2005 we have uh, 2005 we have 9, this is the time and this is the quantity. So, 2005 it is 9, 2006 it is 12. 2007, this is uh, 10, 2008, again we can say this is 20, 2009, 22, 2010, maybe again we can say this is uh, 15. Okay. So, now if you plot this for 2005, this is 9, for 2006, this is 12. For 2007, this is 10, 2008, 
this is uh, 20, 2009 this is 20, 2, 2010 maybe this is 15. So, if you look at here this is the trend for the quantity this is the trend for the demand in the last 5 years. So, if you look at now from 2005 it increases again it has decreases in 2007 again it has increases in 2008, 2009 and decreases in 2010. On this basis now we need to project the future future demand on the basis of this past trend. So, graphical method generally first plot it look at that how is the series, how is the movement of the series assessed and then the future value is forecasted. So, now uh, the it has to see that okay, why the value is less, why the demand is less in 2007 or why it is following a decri declining trend in 2010. So, on this basis now the series will be assessed that why in a specific year or why in a specific uh, time period the demand is more or demand is less, whether the same thing has to be taken into consideration when we are forecasting the demand for the next 5 year also. So, in this case uh, the graphical method is simply plotting the data of the dependent and the uh, time, time and the demand in the past uh, time period and after uh, putting it in the uh, graph the series will be assessed and the future value will be forecasted. So, in the trend projection method the first method comes as the graphical method. Then we will uh, take the least square method and what is a least square method? If you look at, uh, if you remember this we discussed when we are discussing about the regression this typical least square method and this is basically a tool to estimate the coefficient of a linear function based on the minimization of the square deviation between the best fitting line and the original observation given. So, if you remember when we discuss about this in case of the um, uh, regression that we get the error because whatever the regression line and whatever the actual that there is a difference between these two and since there is a difference between these two this gives us the error. So, to minimize the error on the basis of the square deviation between the best fitting line and the original observation generally the method of least square is used and this method of least square also being used to project the forecasted demand and how this uh, demand will be forecasted on the basis of the least square? We will just see that we will find out how we can find out the value of A and B and after finding out the value of A and B on that basis we can forecast because B gives us the slope, slope generally gives us the whatever the whatever the increase in the uh, dependent variable when this typical variable changes and that is why on that basis we can project the uh, demand. So, here uh, we will take the least square method to understand this. Okay. So, here y is equal to a plus b x and from there we get the uh, normal equation because this is the case of the minimization we get the normal equation as sigma y is equal to n a plus b e x and e x y is equal to a e x plus b e x square and to solve this trend equation. So, these are the trend equation and on that basis we need to first solve the value of a and b because this is a trend equation and the basis of the value of a and b now we can uh, find out what will be the we can find out what will be the value of the future in the future time period what will be the value of a and b. Now, what is a and b here? a is the value of intercept and b is the value of the slope and the value of intercept, intercept and slope will decide what will be the demand for the product in the future time period. So, to solve this uh, trend equation, we have to solve this trend equation and for solving this we need to follow the least square method and following this least square method we get a is equal to e y by n and b is equal to e x y by e x square. So, here y is our dependent variable x is the 
independent variable. This is the sum of the dependent variable by the number of observation. This is the sum of both x and y dependent independent variable divided by the square deviation of square um, square root of the square of this uh, independent variable. So, once we get the value of a and b on that basis, now we can project whatever the trend of the future. So, in this case in the trend projection first in the first method we generally do it through a graph we plot the graph in a we plot the dependent and independent variable or the time typically the past time period whatever the demand that we plot it in the graph and on that basis we generally assess the series on, the, on that basis we forecast the value of the uh, value of the demand in the next time period. In case of least square method, generally we follow the least square method of solving the normal equation, finding out the value of slope and intercept. And once we get the slope and intercept on the basis of the past data, then we can uh, project that, uh, project the future A and B, because A is the intercept, B is the slope. On that basis, the demand is dependent on that whatever the change in the independent variable. So, once we get A and B on that basis, we can plot the uh, we can plot or we can project the what will be the future trend or what will be the future demand for this specific product. Then the third method is ARIMA method and this is also known, known as the Box and Jenkins method. And how generally this ARIMA method is being uh, uh, followed to do the trend projection? In the stage 1, uh, the, we need to underline uh, the trend in the series uh, removed with the first differences of the successive observation. So, whatever the underlying trend in the series that has to be removed with the first differences, we need to take the first order derivative of the successive observation. Then stage 2, possible combination will be created on the basis of the autoregressive term, on the basis of the moving average term and the number of differences in the original series of adequate fit into the series. So, there will be possible combination will be created on the basis of the autoregressive term on the basis of the moving average because ARIMA method is one which also consider the autoregressive term and also the moving average term. So, in this case the possible combination will be uh, created on the basis of the autoregressive terms and the moving average term and then the number of differences in the original series will be adequately fit into the series. Then stage 3 the parameter estimation will be done and the parameter estimation for doing the parameter estimation will follow the least square methods. And stage 4 is generally to do the goodness of fit that is tested on the basis of the residual generated repeat if it is not a good fit. So, initially first we do the we will take out the underlying uh, whatever the trend in the series. Then we will find out the combination on the basis of the moving average and on the basis of the autoregressive terms. Then we will do the parameter estimation following the least square method and uh, stage 4 is generally to do the goodness of fit to find out what is the overall explanatory power of the model. And in this case if you find that okay, this model is not going to fit, if it is not fit again we have to start from the stage 2, where again we have to find out the combination with the reference to moving average term and also the autoregressive term. And stage 5, if you find this model is uh, uh, qualifying the goodness of fit or the level of significance is acceptable, then we will use the coefficient to forecast the future demand. So, stage 1 is always to start with the whatever to remove the underlying trend in the series and stage 3 is the uh, uh, stage 3 is the pro, uh, stage uh, 3 is the parameter estimation on the basis of the combination of stage 2. And then stage 4 is goodness of fit and here we need to see that if it is misfit generally we need to repeat stage 2 again. And finally, stage 5 whatever the coefficient we get on that basis we can forecast the future demand. So, graphic, uh, so trend projection methods under quantity method trend projection method is uh, one where we generally use the graphical method or the least square method or the ARIMA methods to train the uh, to uh, project the future trend or project the future demand. Then we will come to the uh, smoothing technique and 
why the smoothing technique is required because series do not show continuous trend there may be seasonal and the random variation as we discussed there may be the secular trend there may be the seasonal trend there may be the cyclical trend there may be the random variation so series that do not show continuous trend either there is seasonal or there is maybe random variation and generally this smoothing technique is used to smoothen this variation and then forecasting the future value since there is a variation the smoothing technique is being used to smoothen the series and then on that basis the uh, future value can be forecasted then we'll see what are the smoothing techniques so because smoothing is generally used to uh, uh, you to smooth the variation in the uh, variation in the series or the variation in the time series data so that there will be more accuracy in the future forecasted demand or there is more clarity in the future forecasted demand so there are uh, three methods of smoothing technique the first one is moving average and in the moving average method the forecast on the basis of the demand values during the recent past so here if it is d is the demand is the time period n in this case we take the di that is sums total of the di divided by the number of the observation so in this case uh, moving average the forecast is on the basis of the demand value during the recent past and here the if you look at this i stand uh, takes from value from 1 to n and here it's most simple uh, simplest version of the smoothing technique but here uh, we take because here we take the basis of the demand value only from the recent past then the second technique is weighted moving average it's the forecast on the basis of the weights of the recent observation so here if you look at uh, the demand is on the basis also not only the demand in the previous time period also the whatever the weight assessed to this demand in the previous time period or whatever the weights for the specific variable that also taken into consideration in case of the weighted moving average so weighted moving average is not only the Uh, not dependent only on the past demand rather also that what is whatever the weight assigned to them those variables that is also taken care in case of the weighted moving average then the third method is exponential smoothing and in case of exponential smoothing generally it assigns a greater weight to most recent data as to have a realistic estimate of the fluctuation so this is again more improvement uh, more uh, re revised form of the whatever the weighted uh, smooth, smoothing technique and in this case generally it assigns this technique generally assign a greater weight to most recent data as to have the realistic estimate of the fluctuation rather so if it is a time series data of 10 years more importance given to the past year past two years past one year rather than the similar weight to the across the year from all this 10 years in this case the uh, weight is given more to the specific year which is just before this present period so here the weight vary between 0 to 1 if it is 10 years and if the forecaster uh, they feel that okay 10 years data is not going to be that much relevant maybe they can assign zero weight to the 10 year data and maybe the again the numbering start from 9 the maybe the less weight to the 9 again maybe little bit more to the 8 and similarly if it is for time period 1 the time period 1 its more assignment will be given to or more weight will be assigned to year 2 so here if it is the forecast in the for the next time period that is t plus 1 so the functional form takes it is equal to a plus dt plus 1 minus a ft so here if you look at the demand is more dependent on that whatever the the uh, forecast value of this present time period because here we are forecasting the for the next time period and what is past period for next next time period this present time so if you are doing it for the t plus 1 time period more weight will be assigned to time period t rather than any other time period because uh, the past year the way major weight or the more weight is given to the past year data so f t plus 1 is 0.30 so if you take the example of uh, t plus 1 is 0.30 and here it is we are considering 0.70 as the uh, forecasted demand for the present time period so here if you look at 
this forecast demand for T plus 1 may more come from because 0 0.7. So, 70 percent come from the forecasted demand for this present time period and 0 0.3 for the demand for the rest of the time period. So, if it is F T plus 1 is equal to 0 0.30 D T plus 0 0.70 F T. In this case for future forecast uh, forecasting of demand for the next time period, if present time period is T, for the next time period if the future forecasting is for T plus 1 period, 70 percent weightage will be given for the forecasted demand for the time period T and rest 30 percent will be given to the demand for the time the rest of the time period. Then we will talk about the uh, second methods under quantity method that is barometric uh, technique. And what is barometric technique? Barometric technique is the uh, to define it the prediction of the turning points in one economic time series through the use of observation on another time series called generally the barometer of the indicators. And generally barometer uh, is one who generally records all this activity or generally may be crystallize all this uh, uh, fluctuation in the economic activity. So, in the barometric uh, technique generally a index is constructed on relevant economic indicators and forecast future trends on the basis of these indicators. So, what how this barometric technique is being practiced? Index will be constructed and what will be the component of the in index? The component of the index will be the relevant economic indicators and once the index will be constructed on that basis future trend will be forecasted on the basis of these indicators. Now, what are the indicators in this case taken for the construction of the index? We take three types of indicators, one is leading indicators, second one is the coincident indicators and third one is the lagging indicators. What is a leading indicators? Leading indicators is one where the series that goes up or down ahead of the other series. So, if the one series is about price quantity, another is about the income quantity. In this case, if the price quantity series is always going up the income and quantity series, we can say that the price quantity they are the leading indicators as compared to the income and quantity. So, leading indicator is one and where the series always go up or down ahead of the other series. Then we have the coincidence indicator and what are the coincidence indicator? This is typically a series that moves up or down simultaneously with level of economic activity. Whatever the series simultaneously it moves and move up and down. So, in a specific time period it moves in a specific time period it comes down. So, moving up and coming down there is there follow a regular trend and that is why this is called as the coincidence indicator because the series it moves up with the increase in the economic activity down with the decrease in the economic activity. Then the third type of indicators is lagging indicators and lagging indicator is series which moves with economic series after a time lag. So, if the economic is economic economy is going through the boom in uh, period T this indicator will move in the T plus 1 period. It will not move in the T period because it is a lagging indicator. If economic activity is more in time period T, this indicator will be moving up in time period T plus 1. And that is why this uh, lagging indicator is known as the series which move with economic series after a lag of the time period. Then the, the so first we had the trend projection method, then we have the barometric methods in the quantity method. Then the third method is uh, econometrics method. And what is econometric method? Here we take two kind of analysis. One is the regression analysis, and second is the uh, simultaneous equation methods. So, regression analysis generally relates the dependent variable to one or more independent variable in the form of linear equation as we discussed when we are discussing about the regression analysis. So, correlation essentially talks about the relationship between two variables whether they are positively related, whether they are negatively related and regression talks about that what is the extent of the relations or in which direction or what is the magnitude of the change in one variable when the other variable changes how they are related that we generally do in the uh, 
regression analysis. So, generally regression analysis relates the dependent variable into the independent variable in the form of a linear equation and this is instruments to the casual forecasting. Now, we will see how this uh, uh, regression analysis generally useful in the forecasting method. So, before that we will see that okay, there are three type of regression analysis, one is simple or bivariate regression analysis where it is basically the relationship between two, two variable, one dependent, one independent variable, they are linearly related. Then this uh, in case of two variable regression also if they are non, they are not related uh, line uh, linear rather they are related in a non-linear way, we get a non-linear uh, regression analysis. And when we study the relationship between one dependent variable and the number of independent variable, we get the multiple regression analysis. So, simple regression analysis is the relationship between one dependent and one independent variable, nonlinear relationship when the variables are related in a nonlinear way and multivariable multiple regression analysis where the uh, one dependent variable is dip, uh, dependent on the number of independent variable and this kind of uh, uh, when the functional form or this kind of equation that is generally the multiple regression analysis. Next, we will see uh, how this uh, regression is used for forecasting methods. Okay. So, if you are taking a simple uh, analysis of simple regression analysis, example of simple regression analysis, suppose d is equal to a plus b p and here we say that both the variable there uh, linearly related, there is a linear relation between d and p. So, d is the dependent variable, p is the independent variable. Now, uh, if you plot it, we have different series of the value for d and p and we will get the combination here and if you plot it in the gra uh, graph, maybe we will get a combination, okay, uh, one combination is p another combination is q, another combination is r and another combination is s. Okay. So, what when p takes a value, what is the value of the d? Uh, when p takes a different value, what is the value of the d? On that basis, we get all this point. So, this point talks about that how both of them, they are related. Now, here if you look at, this is the regression line and if there if this is the if the combination between this d and p is in this line we feel that they are the best fit because they are lying on the regression line but there may be some random variation and if you incorporate such variable why why there is a random variation because here if you look at q and r they are lying on the regression line whereas p is lying above the regression line and s is lying below the regression line q and r is the in the line. So, when we consider that okay, there is a random variation, if there is a random variation, now how this uh, regression equation will be? This will be a plus b p plus e, because e is the random term related with the variation in the related with the random variation. So, now to minimize this random term, we need to calculate the deviation from mean or we need to calculate what is the distance of all this point from the regression line. So, for that we need to find the value of a and b and how this value of a and b will be used? This value of a and b will be used to minimize the minimize the square deviation of square deviation between the line and the actual data point. Because basically here we are trying to, uh, here we are trying to manage that, okay, whatever the deviation in the regression line and the, uh, on the points on the actual points that we need to, that we need to generally uh, minimize and to minimize this we need to find the, find the value of a and b and through the value of a and b we can minimize the square deviation the sum of square deviation between the line and the actual data point. 
So, once we know that this value of a and b that is going to give us or that will helps to minimize the difference between the actual data point and the actual data point and the regression line, then we get the estimates of a and b in that point. So, once we get the estimates of a and b, suppose this is h a k 1 b k, the new regression line will be a k plus b k p and here we say that okay, this value of a and b takes care of the deviation from the regression line and the actual point. Here we get a time that uh, term that is x plus sum of square, this is the measure of predictive accuracy of regression equation. So, if it is smaller ESS, if the value of this is small, then more accurate and if it is closer the line, then this is the best fit because the deviation between actual point and the regression line is actual point and the regression line is minimal. So, now we find out the coefficient of determination to find out how these two variables they are related. So, to find this we need to find out the total sum of square. Total sum of square is the x plus sum of square plus residual sum of square and so r square is x plus sum of square and total sum of square or we can just reframe it this as T s s minus R s s divided by T s s. So, this is 1 minus R s s by T s s and if R square is R square has to be non negative because it talks about the coefficient of the determination like what is the explanatory power of this model altogether then and this should be always 0 r square less than equal to 1 and if r square is equal to 1 we call it a perfect fit. Okay. Now, how this uh, regression equation can be used for forecasting the demand? So, till the time what we have seen in the regression equation that we are trying to minimize the error. So, once we get the best fit regression line on that basis we can forecast okay, these are the actual data point which is also best fit because there is a accuracy in the projected and the plotted and once we get that uh, regression line best fit regression line on that basis now we can uh, forecast the future demand. Then what is the what are the problems in this econometrics method specifically in case of the regression analysis. We can find the value of a and b on that basis we can forecast the demand and also to minimize the error we can also find out the value of a cap and b cap because that also takes care of the minimization of the error between the regression line and the actual data point we can forecast the demand. But what are the problems or what are the challenges being faced when we use the regression method to forecast the demand. The first problem is multicollinearity. Here are two or more explanatory variable in the regression model are highly correlated that is why you call it say multicollinearity problem. And since they are highly correlated the impact of each individual in each individual independent variable on the dependent variable becomes difficult to ascertain. So, they are correlated. So, what is the impact of the independent variable, individual independent variable on the dependent variable finding that is difficult. So, like consumption of an individual is affected by the income and wealth of the individual. And if you look at income and wealth, they are uh, they are closely related. So, in this case the detection of removal of multicollinearity is important because otherwise it is difficult to find out what is the contribution to consumption from the income and what is the contribution to consumption on the wealth of the individual. So, this multicollinearity can be removed by inclusion of omission of variables, additional data, increased sample size and the intervention of the advanced statistical tool. The second point is uh, autocorrelation. And when we get this condition of this autocorrelation, this is the condition where error terms e 
in the regression equation are found to be serially correlated or also called as the serially, serially correlated rather than autocorrelation. It can occur both in time series as well as uh, cross sectional data and to correct this autocorrelation problem generally we use the Darwin Watson test to see that the error terms they are at least not serially correlated. Then the third problem is heteroscedasticity and what is the problem of heteroscedasticity? Because the regression model always assume that the variance of error term is constant for all values of the independent variable in the model. But if the variable have different variance, then we generally land into the heteroscedastic situation and this disturbance leads to biased estimator of the true variance and there is no particular rule for detection for heteroscedasticity. Mostly uh, it is detected by the experience and it can also can be overcome by running a weighted least square regression like giving a weight to each of this variable or maybe through the smoothing technique this uh, weighted average mean or the weighted least square can be used to solve this problem of heteroscedasticity. Then we have a specification error. It occurs when one or more independent variable in the regression model is omitted when the structural form is wrongly constructed. So, we take the example like in a demand forecasting regression of consumer omitting income of consumer leads to specification error and example 2 is the demand function is non-linear, but if it is estimate to linear it leads to the specification error. Then identification problem typically this uh, typical example taken in case of identification problem is if it is required to determine the effect of quantity demanded of a good when the price is increased by say 10 percent, historical data of monthly demand and price will not give the solution as price is the part of the multi equation system. So, supply of the good also need to be taken in the account to avoid the biased parameter. So, there is also the problem of identification in case of the regression. So, the second method or the, the second method of the quant uh, this econometrics which come as the simultaneous equation method what is generally used to forecast the demand. Now, what is the simultaneous equation method? Based on the guiding principle that any economic decision every variable influence every other variable. So, any economic decision all the variable influence the every other variable. Like if take the example of decision on optimal advertisement expenditure depends on expected sales volume, volume of sales is influenced also by the advertisement. Example 2, quantity demanded of the tea depends on the price of coffee and also price of coffee get influenced by the quantity demanded for the tea. So, if you look at the variable they are related to each other and that is why all the variables they influence the other variable every other variable when it comes to economic decision. So, since there is a simultaneous and two way relationship between these two vari the between the variables which influence for or which requires to forecast the demand, it is not possible to capture such relationship using the single equation models like a typical regression model. Hence, the need of simultaneous equation method comes here and a typical simultaneous method comprise of endogenous, exogenous, structural equation and definitional equation. What is endogenous variable? Endogenous variable are those which system seeks to predict are included in the model as the dependent variable and number of equation in the model must equal to the number of endogenous variable. Exogenous those are given outside the model and it is not a uh, if you look at the uh, number of equation is not dependent on the exogenous variable. Then we have structural equations. Structural equation are those equation which seeks to explain the relation between the particular endogenous variable and other variable in the system. And definitional equation are those equation which specify the relationship that are considered to be true by definition. So, through this four uh, components generally the simultaneous equation method is used. So, the detailed description of this method is not uh, within the scope of this typical course or this typical session. So, yeah, that is why we have just identified this model that how this model is being used to forecast the demand. 
Now, what are the limitation for this demand forecasting? Because in the previous class, we talk about the subjective methods of the demand forecasting and in this class, we talked about the quantitative method of demand forecasting and as a whole, there are few limitation of the demand forecasting and what are those limitation? We will just check that. Past data and events are not always the true predictors of future because the whatever the events that may not recur in the future time period and also about the trend that may not also occur because as a whole if you look at the time period is dynamic whatever the previous time period the next time period may not happen in the same way. Then if there is a change in the fashion again forecasting is difficult because if you are doing a forecasting for this in the uh, for next 5 years maybe the fashion has changed people they may not going to buy the same product and that is why it is difficult to do the forecasting for the product. Consumer psychology changes with the time. So, again this there is a difficulty in capturing the consumer psycho psychology and on that basis doing the demand forecasting. It is costly because it is a exhaustive process to do this forecasting. And when there is a uh, if you look at there is a lack of forecasting experts and also there is a lack of past data for forecasting which creates another challenge for the demand forecasting typically for the uh, economic organization. So, whatever we discuss in the previous class on demand forecasting and uh, in today's session about the demand forecasting, to summarize this we can say that forecasting is an operational research technique for planning and decision making. It is a scientific analytical estimation of demand for product service for a specified period of time and this is categorized on the basis of the level of forecasting, on the basis of the time period, on the basis of the nature of goods. And we have two techniques of demand forecasting, qualitative where we consider the consumer opinion survey, sales force composite, export opinion method, market simulation and test marketing. And we have uh, quantitative methods where we discuss about the trend projection, smoothing technique, barometric technique and also the econometric method. So, these are the, uh, uh, these are the and the also we discuss about some challenges about the uh, demand forecasting particularly when the time is dynamic, the consumer psychology changes and also there is a difficulty in getting a good forecast expert or uh, uh, depends upon that the whatever the past data that is also non-availability of that also poses a challenge for the demand forecasting. Nevertheless, demand forecasting is always a, uh, always uh, helps the firms to plan their output, plan their uh, distribution, plan their uh, procurement of the raw materials, but still there are few challenges to uh, face if the demand forecasting has to be done.